Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel where the gnomes live. This is Sharon Oyella and today we're going to be making this little rat. And this is probably one of my most requested tutorials since I started making miniatures in 2013. I have been asked many times, how do I make my creatures? I do try to explain it in blog posts, but I've never shown it on video. And I'm really glad that I waited for this video because there are some things that I've done in here that I've never done before and it's going to make your life a whole bunch easier. The way I've constructed the tail and the arms and the toes. And he's got wonderful little teeth there, look very realistic. And I gave him some whiskers, of course. So I'm going to show you step by step how I put him together. And he's all foil, masking tape, and paper towel. There's no clay in him. And even though I did use wire to make his arms poseable and his tail poseable, you don't need the wire. And just for size comparison, if you're trying to do a 112 scale, you would have to mold down the beginning start of his body down quite a bit smaller than I did in this video. I'm making him for a display. This is more along the lines of a 112 scale rat, character rat. I made him, I believe it was, mm, I think it was 2015, I can't remember. But he's actually got a clay body and then he's got the same sort of fur on top. And like I said, this size here is completely adjustable and very easy to scale down. So he's just under four and a half inches. I'm going to quickly go over the supplies list with you. It will also be written down in the blog post and that link should be popping up here on your screen. You can click that at any time during this video. So to make his base, his body, I used aluminum foil and I used only the cheap stuff. This is great value from Walmart and I didn't use very much of it. Less than 12 feet for sure. And with that, you have to have masking tape. Make sure you don't get this at your dollar store. Dollar store masking tapes don't stick very good. You want to have a good masking tape because you want to be able to uh, stick it on the foil without it lifting. Okay, and then a paper towel, just a cheap paper towel will do. This is going to be his skin. To apply that paper towel, I used regular PVA glue. And then I also have tacky glue on hand. Tacky glue is important in this project. You can also use it to attach his skin but this is a little bit more expensive. So if you have both glues on hand, that's great, but make sure you do have a tacky glue. And jute twine, I got this at the dollar store, jute twine. This is gonna make his limbs and his tail. For the arms and the tail, I did use the wire, like I said, and this is a 20 gauge stem wire. You don't have to get the same kind. You can get it in a spool. Any 20 gauge wire will work, but again, that is optional. To make his whiskers, I use the bristles off of a paintbrush, but you can use fishing line or any sort of twine that you can find if you don't have any bristles on hand. For his fur, I used white acrylic yarn, and with that, you want a pair of really good scissors. So these are very sharp, and they'll make your job a lot easier as you're cutting the, the fur up. And with the color of fur, you want to choose a similar or the same color that you use for the fur, because we're going to paint his body first. So because I used white fur, I got white paint. And then the other colors are optional. For his fingers and toes, I used a skin tone. It's actually called skin tone. If you can't find any of that, you can mix a pink and a white together. Inside his mouth, I used some burnt sienna. And I used some black for shadowing out different parts of his body. And his eyes are actually just pieces of felt that I cut out and glued in place. If you use a wire, then pliers are needed. Pliers also come in handy when you're shaping different parts of the foil. So if you have some pliers, those are helpful. And an awl, something with a pointy end. If you don't have an awl, you can use a, um, a nail, or anything with a point. I also use the chopstick. It helped me along the way as well. All right, my friends, let's make this little rat. In the next clip, I've already rolled out some foil, so let's get started. I think that's about two and a half feet there, and it doesn't really matter. It's going to be different for everyone. This is very cheap stuff, so I'm using a little bit extra than I would if I had a heavy-duty foil. Now I'm just going to roll it up. Okay, and the very tip there, I just want to squish into a point. And this is going to be the beginnings of my rat nose. And now we're just going to bend this down. I was editing the clip and thought it would be a nice idea to tell you how long that nose ended up being after I folded it down like this. And it was about three inches, maybe just a little bit more than three inches. It gets played around with quite a bit and it will lose some of that length, of course. I'm going to be shaping it in the next few clips and you'll see what I mean. But about three inches. 
I think I want a little bit of a hump here, so I'm just going to push up. Okay, and now the body, I'm not too sure how tall I want it. Maybe about that tall. So I'm just going to push down on the bottom. Just kind of make it melt into itself. So this is four and a half inches, and I'm just measuring that for those of you who are curious. You don't have to do the same height. You can get a roundabout approximate, or you can make it really tall or really short. So about four and a half inches. Now I want to build up around the body, so I'm just going to roll out some more foil. I just folded it over and I'm going to fold that in half. This is very cheap foil. You can see how thin that is still. If I had thicker foil, I wouldn't need that much. I'm just going to wrap this around. And I'm just going to use some tape as I go along just to keep things in place. So where that join there, I'm just going to add a little piece of tape just to make sure it stays up. And a piece of tape here. Now I'm just adding that so nothing falls off. Okay, now I'm still going to build onto this body. And I think, let's see, how long should the neck be? I'm not even sure. Right there. Sure, let's go with that. <laughs> I'm going to take out a little bit more foil. Yeah, I just want to add a little bit of a pot belly there. So I'm just going to take a smaller piece and then squish it up. Okay, I'm just going to tape that on. And if it gets too fat, I can always squish that foil uh, with my fingers and just squeeze it down and it loses some of its volume. But I'm going to build up a little bit more here. Alright, my friend's just popping in with an edit so you can get some clarity on what you just saw there. I noticed that I didn't talk about the tip of his nose in any of the clips that I edited, so just keep that in mind. And it's nothing spectacular, you just shape it with your fingers. And you saw me add his little mouth here. I'm going to be adding cheeks, and the cheeks get added in part two. And you did see me add the little part here, and that was to make his little hunchback. So everything you do in this form now is going to show up in his final look. And everything is optional. And just play around with it and have some fun. Okay, I'm going to just put some tape around here. Because I want to cut a slit in the front. And I didn't think of this until just now. So I'm just going to make a little slit here in the very front. This is something that you can do when you're first uh, building the form. You can add this little part in and then you don't have to cut it after. Okay, so I just did a little slit in his back just like I did in the front and then I used the back end of my knife and just pounded in a little bit of a dent there. Anyway, now I am working on legs and feet, and I started off making foil and masking tape strips, and I was going to put these together, and actually, this is what it would look like. 
and then I was going to show you how to put the skin on but while I was doing that I looked up on my shelf and there was this twine and I thought you know what this might be a whole lot faster and a lot a whole lot easier and here's a little hand that I made using the twine and it's like rubber and there's the foot future me popping in with an edit because I want to be super clear about how I figured out the length for these feet I wanted the foot itself to be as long as the body with a heel sticking out the back and toes sticking out the front now you can make your toes as long as you want or as short as you want they don't have to be the exact as mine so you can see here the entire length after everything was said and done and trimmed up and the heel made because we're gonna have to make the heel as well is three inches okay so to make one foot we're gonna use ten uh, strands of twine what I do is just wrap it around my hand and I'm gonna wrap more than I need because depending where you're at on the string with these kind of balls of twine here you can get really thin pieces they get thin in certain areas and then fat in other areas so we're gonna weed out the thin ones so I got my bundle I'm gonna cut through one end and just for curiosity's sake, let's measure how long these are. About nine inches long, eight to nine inches long. You're definitely not gonna be using eight or nine inches. We're gonna be trimming as we go, but we want that much length to work with for a doll this size. And we're gonna look here and we're gonna weed out the thin ones. There's one. It wouldn't make that much of a difference, but I do wanna have fatter toes. Okay, so I need 10 strands to make one foot so there's one two three four five and that's going to be one stack and then I have four here I've got to cut one more and you can see the design of the foot there's a shorter toe for the left and right so we're going to work that into our design okay I'm going to get a piece of masking tape and I want about two inches of toe between my masking tape and the tip of the toe. You can make yours shorter or longer, of course. You don't have to be exact. I wasn't exact, I didn't even know what I was doing when I first started. This kind of just worked out for me, so I'm gonna recreate exactly what I did. So I'm just gonna put a whole lot of tacky glue on top and the bottom. So I'm gonna set this underneath the fan. I'm gonna let it dry for a little bit and then I'll show you what the next step is. All right, so that glue is dry enough where I can work with this piece. Now I just separate the very tips of the toes. Okay, and then we're gonna get our other five ready and we're gonna put our glue again. Okay, and now we can just put our other five right on top. So that short one should be just as short as the first one. And I'll just make sure that they're all the same length. And then you want to make sure that the strings are sitting exactly on top of each other and they're not slipping sideways. Because how they dry will be how they stay forever. So just make sure. Alright, popping back in with an edit. Once I have the second layer on and it's all straight up and down and nothing slipping sideways, then I'm going to put my masking tape around where I put the original one in the same spot just to hold everything together and I'm going to add my glue you just have to do glue on the top of the toes and then on the sides make sure you get the sides as well and glue is only on the toes themselves nothing on the back of the foot we're gonna leave that alone until we come back to work on it at the time that I was filming this, I really had no idea what I was going to do with the back of the foot. So we're just going to leave that alone. And we're working on toes only. Then set it aside to dry. And when I'm drying these, in the next clip, it's going to be the old me again. So I don't mention this. In, when I'm drying these, I stick them underneath the fan. So I'd stick it underneath this fan for about 20 minutes. At that point, after about 20 minutes or so, they're still a little bit wet on the inside in, in between the toes. But they'll be dry enough to touch. And then you can manipulate the toes much easier get them to bend up and then uh, separate the front of the toes because in the end we want some toes that are separated in the very front there have a little bit of space then we can get our pliers in there and squeeze them together okay so you can see that once it's dry 
everything's pretty flat and you want to just make it so it doesn't look look at the difference there you want to make it look like it's not so flat and so kind of dead looking so I just separate the top of the toes where they would naturally separate on a real rat and I actually left this overnight so it's a little bit harder to separate here just cutting the glue in between the toes I'm not cutting the strings I shouldn't have left it like that but I was so tired <laughs> I was filming like uh, I think it was 2.30 when I finally turned the camera off. On my other one, I just let it dry under the fan for about, I don't know, 20 minutes or so. And then um, it's still kind of wet at that point, but you can work with it a little bit easier. And I see one kind of slip to the side there while it was drying. You see that? This one here. And I should have made sure it was sitting right on top. Okay, so we're just going to bend this a little bit. I want to make it look a little bit more alive. And squeeze. I just squeeze them to make them look a little thinner. You see, just working it, manipulating those strings adds a little bit more life. So I could work with this a little bit more. I can also do it after I paint it to like play around with with those little toes. The reason why I thought about twine and glue for toes is I believe it was last year. I used twine to make a faucet for one of my miniature sinks because I didn't have any faucets on hand and I thought if I put the tacky glue on the string and I bent it this way and I used a pin so I pinned here and pinned here and put it on a piece of styrofoam in that shape and then loaded it up with glue and it's held that shape after the glue dried so I thought well if it worked for that maybe it'll work for toes See the big difference that that black makes? I add uh, black and I just shadow out all the lines. And I also do underneath. Then you take a lighter color and you get, you just dip it in, you get all the paint off of it. You're just going to be dry brushing. And I just pull it over that color. It just tones it down. The lighter color that I used in this video is called oatmeal. But you don't have to use the same one. You can use a beige or tan, off-white, cream, even a white. You just want to tone down the color. Or you can just leave the color the way it was. I often dry brush over things. It just adds a little bit more life to it. But you can definitely play around with that color and those ideas. I'm going to be working more on these feet after because I got to cut this up and figure out how I'm going to fix up the back when I'm closer to attaching them. So right now I want to figure out the arms and where I'm going to be putting those and right here looks about right. So I'm just going to poke a hole right through that foil and it should be fairly easy to do because it's just foil. And now I'm going to make that hole a little bit bigger. Can I do that with that? Not yet. So I gotta work at this. There we go. And there we go. Okay, I'm gonna be using my twine for the arms and the hands, of course. So I've just cut five long pieces and I'm going to push them through that hole. But to make sure everyone gets through there, I'm just gonna put a little tape on the end. Okay, that should push through. There we go. So I can just grab that and pull it through. All right, so what am I going to do with this? I'm not even too sure yet. I'm just thinking maybe thread a wire through too at the same time. All right, guys, I thought it was a good time to pop in and let you know that you don't need to add that wire. It's completely optional. I only added it because I wanted his arms to be posable, but it's not something that's necessary in the tail as well. You can add a wire in the tail or leave it. So I'll show you. Here's one of my practice tails that I made without wire. And you can see it's totally fine. It's stiff. You can bend it, but it's not going to hold that bend, of course. But it's stiff and it's going to work out just fine without that wire. So only add the wire if you want to do that. It takes a little bit of extra work to bury it, but it's easy enough to do. So I just want a narrow piece of tape. And I'm just going to wrap it around 
where that wire is coming out. And now I'll do this side. Okay, so now I'm going to add my glue and just kind of bury that wire in between all the twines. And I'm not sure how this is going to work yet. We're just figuring this out as we go. I'm going to set this underneath the fans and then I'll cut them up to the length that I want them. But I want that to dry first. All right, that, that glue is dry enough to work with. And I was just editing the last couple of clips that I took and I realized I went a little too quickly there. Probably should have slowed down for you. But there was a narrow piece of tape that I just added there and it kind of sucked it in to that little hole. And that just holds it in place. And then I add my other little piece of tape here and then the glue over and tried to bury the wire in the twine. A little bit of difficulty there, but for the most part it worked and it's bendable, which is exciting. I'm gonna cut this up shorter so it's not so difficult to deal with. Now my arms are not gonna be longer than the body for sure, so I'm gonna cut right to the bottom there. So future me, popping back in with a little tip when you're cutting the arms, because I went quickly over that. I knew that I wasn't adding any more length to his body, so his legs were going to be attached right to the bottom of that body there. So that was a good length for me. If you're designing your doll with a little bit more length in the leg, let's say you're going to add a leg and then add a foot underneath it, if you did that, these arms would actually be too, too short. So you want to keep that in mind when you're uh, cutting the arms. You can even leave the arms, just hold them out of the way while you work on the bottom of the body, and then you'll have even a better idea how long you want those arms to be. I want to be adding fur on top of this without having to give him a shirt to cover up the wire. So this is what I'm trying to figure out as I go along. If I can bury this wire in such a way, I'm going to make it shorter. It doesn't have to be as long as the fingers. I just want the arms bendable. So I'll cut this one up as well. And then I'm going to take that little tip of the wire and bend it over because I don't want that hurting anybody or myself. So I bent it over and now I'm going to squeeze. So I have no sharp edges there. I'm going to glue that right over top of that and I'm going to cut it after. And just work it right in. And I'll do this one. I'm glad I decided to just film it all because usually I make something and then I have to make it again to show you. But I'm running out of time because it's the middle of, well it's actually it's past the middle of October. And I wanted this up by Halloween so this is a little bit different than I normally do. So I thank you for your patience. The front, uh, the front feet have four toes and the hind have five. And I knew that and I went and pulled five through the front. So I'm only supposed to be shaping four fingers. And I'll have to trim this one off, which is totally fine. So now I'll just set these aside and let them dry, and then we'll come back and work on the next step. So his fingers are dry enough to paint, but I'm not totally happy with how they look. I think they look pretty funny, actually. So I just took a, one of those skinny pieces of twine. I, I chose a skinny one. And I tapered the end with my scissors, and I unraveled the other end. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to layer this right over top. I actually made a little tip. It wasn't difficult, I just had to angle my scissors. And it's going to overlap the end just a little bit. So it's going to look like a fingernail or a pointy end of the finger. And then I unraveled the end so I can just lay it out without having too much bulk. I'm about to add my second one and I made it shorter so it unravels quite a bit lower than the other one so I don't have a whole bunch of bulk in one area. Yeah, I'm already liking how this is looking much better than just the one layer.
All right, six more to go. So I'll just do it off camera. And I'm going to be layering the ends where I unravel. So the next one will go a little higher and then the next one a little lower. And I'll do the same on the other arm. That way I don't get too much bulk in one spot. So those turned out rather cool. I'm pretty happy with that. After I, the paint dried and everything, I just squeezed the wrist part because that's supposed to be pretty thin, right? And we're going to be adding fur that goes from here down. And hopefully that turns out. But I want the little wrist. So I'll just squeeze it with the uh, pliers. Alright guys, I'm popping in with an edit because in the next clip I'm going to continue working on the arm. And I'm going to be adding a thumb as well. But you'll see the features here and it'll look like I've jumped ahead of you, but I haven't. All of this part here, when we work on his face, will be in part 2 or part 3 of this video. And I wanted to keep the arm together in this part, in part 1. It's pretty stuck in there, but I would feel happier with a little bit more security. So I'm just going to take a little piece of twine and I've unraveled the ends. And I'm going to load up glue around the arm where it joins all around that hole. And then I'll lay this in here and tap it right in close to that arm, as close as I can get it all the way around. So I could take one end and wrap it right around the arm and then the other end to the body. There we go. So I'll leave that dry. So that is dry and I've painted it, but around these arms I want to put some more masking tape and I'm going to put masking tape right over top that extra twine that I added. See that string? I shouldn't have painted that, but can you see the string there? I'm going to put tape right over top of that. Once we get the skin on there, it makes such a huge difference in the stability of everything. And I just like to overlap where I can any tape that is needed. This adds so much strength to everything. Masking tape and then the skin over top. And I'm going to put one more. There we go. It feels strong and secure and nothing's going to be be pulled out or ripped off. And I'm so sorry I didn't show this on film. I was actually talking to my dad on the phone and I got distracted. And I was working on these while I was on the phone. But it's not anything complicated. I added the extra thumb. Now I know rats only have four so you don't have to do this. But every time I looked at him he just seemed so funny without that added little uh, thumb there. So I took a short piece like this and raveled the other end. So all that's left is just the thumb itself. And I just placed it right there and loaded it up with glue. And I didn't add it another layer on top, I just left it by itself. Alright my friends, that will bring us to the end of this video and we'll continue working on him in part two. Before you head over there, let's just talk about this arm because I kind of winged my way along there and I just figured things out as I went along. However, I wouldn't change a thing. The way I did the arm turned out absolutely wonderful. So if I was going to do him all over again, knowing what I know now, I would still pull those five through. I'd pull the wire through. I wouldn't cut off the thumb, of course, because I ended up adding it anyway. And I would do everything the exact same way, and I would layer these second uh, layer of fingers on top the exact same way. Because you couldn't pull ten through and work on them the way we did. It just wouldn't work out. So still pull five through, layer those top fingers the way I showed you, and it'll turn out. So I learned a lot uh, doing this arm. And in the next one that I make, I will do it exactly the same way. Alright, now we can head over to part two and we'll continue working on him. Guys, you can hit that little box that's popping up on your screen and I'll meet you over there.